Okay, you're rolling. Peter, have you been writing a lot of music uh, on the road with this Casio? No, not directly. I just got it working in the team. Peter is out. Oh, okay. <laughs> You got. So this is uh, somewhat of a new toy for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very beautiful toy too. Uh huh. Did you buy it for yourself? Well, someone lent it to me. I have one for myself, but this is more professional. Are you writing any new tunes on yeah, it? Always. Oh yeah. <laughs> How did the uh, the gig go in Montreal? Very good. Very good. Oh, the 40,000 people, that's not usually the kind of uh, crowd, that, I've seen you play to a crowd that huge, but usually you're playing to smaller crowds. Mm -hmm. How is it playing to more people? Is there any difference in between the two for you? Well, to me, it could be a slight difference, but as a psychologist, it's not much a difference, because as long as the people is before me, three to four, five to six, seven feet away, Mm -hmm. There's a certain amount of energy that I magnetically pick up. So don't care what amount of crowd. But then again, I do prefer to play in smaller places for better sound. Oh yeah, technically speaking, mm, that. But yeah. if, in terms of getting a message across to people or getting a certain energy yeah. across to people, I prefer the crowd. It's a <laughs> <laughs> This is a pretty extensive tour that you're on, the most extensive that you've probably ever been on. Yes, and they must make very good use of this one, because after this one, there will be no next one. What do you mean? What do you mean? There's a time for everything. And your time for playing uh, concerts is over? <clears throat> Not over, but in America, I've been here too many times. Don't feel no way. Don't get upset. You'll see me again. <laughs> But not on a tour, you say? Uh, well, for example, I will come to America, but not on these kind of extensive, you know, 42 and 53 cities and yeah. those kind of things. It's a bit crazy. Is yes. that what you find is just getting yes, to you? Yes, 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 yes. Too much work. That's a bit too much. You know. I want to ask you about the, uh, the World Music Festival in Jamaica. We were there and we saw you there and you were very inspiring and incredible. How well, did you feel about the whole thing? Well, for example, everything wasn't corpusetically arranged in the proper, in the most proper nature. But then again, it's music and music and music come together to make music. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> I, I didn't see, I didn't see much of the show, but the rest of artists is, I saw like Aretha Franklin and maybe a few others. But music in general is beautiful, and what's more beautiful is when people sit down and wait for four, five, six, seven, eight hours to see their artists, mm -hmm. you know, because I was the last one to play on that concert, and people waited till the next, till Sunday morning, and that was very beautiful. You played when the sun came up. Mm -hmm. that it was, was great. It was, it was something on another planet. Yes, you know? my dear. <laughs> I didn't even it was great. It's really happening. Not only the sun, but the rainbow. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was magic. And it's on, it's on, it's on video, but I haven't seen it yet. I only heard it's beautiful. I would love to see it. You have to come to our TV station because we <coughs> have you. We take some of you mm -hmm. there, and we <coughs> have you on our tapes. I would love to, to get some. So, I would uh, love to we'll get, get some. We'll get you a copy. Yeah, man. We'll get, I would you love were that. playing with a, a sword or something. You yeah. had a big, what was that? My defense sword. Defense against the dragon. What does the dragon symbolize? Well, the dragon symbolizes evil. And my sword symbolizes the execution of the dragon. There's a lot of evil in this business. In or so business. I've heard, and so in every business, mm -hmm. in every business is mm -hmm. corrupt. Yeah, well. do you, how do you protect yourself from the corruption, from not succumbing to the, the temptations? Thing, yeah. Well, just being yourself. Because people, if you're not being yourself positively, then you will be easily carried away. And if you are fascinated by material things, 
you'll be easily carried away, you'll be easily tempted, you'll be easily led. But I know this world. I'm in this world, but not of this world. I'm of the past world, living in the present world, and of the future world. But there are so much things in this world that is oppos opposing to positivity and righteousness that everything comes in conflict with righteousness. That you have to just isolate yourself from the shit stem, see, and be very spiritual within, <clears throat> within the shit stem because, my dear, it is crazy. I see many people started nice, fine looking fellow, and at the age of 28, 30, or a little more, He's in his coffin, see, so it's ugly, but then again it can be beautiful if you only be yourself. Well, do you think it's because you've been blessed that you've been managed to transcend all yes, that? Yes, 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 yes. I was born that way, you know. Did you know that when you were a kid in Trenchtown, a hungry mm -hmm. kid that yeah, just wanted yeah, to be yeah, up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You always felt that? Mm -hmm. There's a new book out on the life of Bob Marley called uh, Catch a Fire. I don't know if you've heard of it or, mm, yet, or, or, or read about it. And there's, a, there's some, they write about you in the book. And, they you know, most the write kind about of, me. <laughs> <laughs> and the way they describe you is, uh, I think it's quite wonderful, you know, how you were just this, you know, lanky true, kind of true, kid that true. was really a fighter. Yeah, man, and really every time, a determined. Determined to make it, yes. exactly. And that was like the most important thing See. to you. Was it music that you were always determined to make it in? Did you see yourself as a great, you know, reggae superstar, musical hero? No. I only see myself as a preacher, a messenger. And I see the music with the greatest musical potential that music ever had in the Western Hemisphere. See? But then again, within the shit stream, I see so much discrimination and po political victimization against the music. Because as you know, and as many other people know, that reggae has been here for a good time. Time enough for it to be exposed, to be known, to be heard, and to be loved by people who love dirt. See? Because I hear people dance to all kind of dead music. Music that comes today and die tomorrow sing and they elevate and they praise and they promote and they love those kind of music but the music that has the spiritual medicinal upliftment they don't like like to promote it because it is branded political within the shit stem mm -hmm. but the people knows the potential of the music or else 40,000 people would not stand up to see or to hear this music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what's happening? Okay, you said you were you used to play uh, organ in the church. Do you remember any of the songs you used to play at yeah, church? Yeah, all of them. Okay, let's hear one. <laughs> hear one? Why? It's only an introduction of one I can get. I don't like to remember the church. Oh, wow. Why don't you like to remember the church? Well, that is rock of ages. You see, there was so much fantasy being taught in the church, my dear. And it's insignificant to say I don't like to remember the church. But then again, the church to the west is a building that people congregate in. The church to the east is a person who teaches the people the truth about, the Christ about life and about what they call Christianity. See? What they call Christianity in the West is a way of life in the East. Mm -hmm. They call it religion down here, seeing it's for commercial reasons. It's not to be commercialized. So that's the reason why I say, mm -hmm. you know. I just want to move this thing in under your arm. Yeah. Okay. True. Do you find it uh, an irony that? The, here are the, okay, you're on this tour with the police. The mm. police have made a lot of money, a mm. lot of money, a I big, big commercial success. And I, I have to say, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with the reggae mm. sound and mm. their music. And that was the thing Most that made them it. different at first, and that was the thing that... 
people latched on to. Mm -hmm. Does that make you mad, maybe angry, that they were able to capitalize on that reggae sound when so many other great reggae artists in the world have not been able to, to break that commercial ground? Well, I am only angry at the shit steam for the discrimination against the root of reggae. But I would not be angry of them commercializing on the music because they can only paint a picture from a picture but the other picture, the original, is still there, mm -hmm. see? And people are always attracted to beautiful things. And if they see the beauty in the music and paint a picture from that picture and try to portray that picture to their people, the people will be attracted to the beauty of that picture. But then again, it will give the people the idea in their head to think where that picture came from. And one day the people will see and hear and feel something of the nature of that picture. Mm -hmm. And when they hear, they will say, I think I heard this music already. Then they will rea realize it's the root. Uh -huh. So what's their, what, what they are doing is just exposing the music or the element of the music or the fragrance of the music so that when they s get in the pot, they will know what's in the bottom. Judging from what I saw in Jamaica, and well, obviously even from just the, the, there's a common knowledge that mm. you are such a hero to people, mm. and it, especially in Jamaica, it's almost as though you were a national hero to people. Does yeah. that put a lot of responsibility on you? Well, it has always been response. It is, has always been my responsibility, because as it was written, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Mighty, Wonderful, so much different, many different names that, you know, people will put on your head. But it's something I see that must be done. I'm a man who was born in the ignorance of the society, raised in the ignorance of the society. I've seen the ills of the society, the destruction of the society. I see youths die within the society because of the ignorance of the society. And my intellect and intelligence and wisdom, knowledge and understanding that I was born with, I motivated it, I watered it, and I made it grow. In its growing, it brought me to the light, to a light that was shining, but slightly, until that light began to grow. And that light was the reality of life, see? And I followed that light until now, and that light has taught me so many things, my dear, that it's incredible. But then again, there is so much things that this light taught me that I will, I will not tell you. I will put it in a movie, and I will write it in a book. And write it in a song? Mm -hmm. And it will be more, you know... You will get more feelings, you will see the whole picture will be painted. Do you feel that you have a, some, you know, some kind of secret maybe that other people are, just aren't aware of? Yeah, many secrets. How come? Just because you have developed your mind to that degree? Yes, and <clears throat> I've come to the consciousness <clears throat> of the search. Because many people in life search what they do not don't know what they're looking for. They don't know which direction to look. So that creates a catastrophe in the search. See, when if you had just made one glance inward, you would have seen everything. And that was the search I made because then it made me to realize that the creator who made man put a concept of creativity in every man. But if you don't look internal, you'll never find it. And if you waste your time looking externally, you will kill it. Are you totally satisfied now with your life? If someone was to say to you that tomorrow, Peter Tosh, you're going to be a dead man. If someone was to say that. Yes. Would I you would be saying, okay, that's fine, because I've lived my life and I've seen the light and I know what If a guy about. tell me that tomorrow I will be dead, he will be going in the coffin. Yeah, man, not me.
-hmm. See? Because that is one of the secrets of life, to know how to live and how to counteract the negative forces of death. So don't feel, <coughs> don't feel no way, my dear. It's just part of life. Many people search, but their search take them to the grave. My search takes me to life. And there is no man on earth that can threaten me and create any amount of fear inside of me. Because, you see me, my search teaches me to kill death, to frustrate frustration, to mad madness, and to assassinate the assassinator. Spiritually, not physically. Without a hand move, without my eyes quint, only with the meditation of the mind. A lot of artists say that you have to be in pain to create. What do you think about that? Pain to create? Well, pain is the motivation of creation. But then again, you don't have to be in pain because I'm the foundation of creation. See, I'm an inspiration within creation. Do you see yourself as a prophet then? It's not who I see myself to be, see. I just see myself doing positive works, and I intend to do positive works. See, I intend to be truthful. So, it's who people see me to be. But they don't care who you see me to be. I am who I am. I will not be anyone else but me. But aren't you worried that people look up to you too much? You too have much. to be a perfect person in order not to disappoint them, in order to always live up to their, their expectations. Of no, you. I am not here to live up to no one's expectation. Neither is anyone here to live up to mine. I hold no man, no obligation. No man owe me none, so everything is fine. My duty is to teach people. I am here to lead the horse to the water, but I'm not here to force him to drink. You, I, I, I just heard that uh, you received some uh, notification from the government of Spain or something for mm -hmm. Spanish people because mm -hmm. marijuana just became legal there. That is so very they good. Criminalized it. What, what, what exactly happened? Tell me the story about that. Well, I couldn't tell you until I go there. Okay. <laughs> I've been there. I was there previously for the previous two months, and I heard that, you know, because an election was coming up, and I heard that. The day when I went there, Herb was decriminalized the day before. And I figure more or most that was spiritually designed for the commemoration of my presence in Spain. See, because of the work, my contribution towards the struggle for the freedom and the decriminalization of Herb. Because if Herb is illegal, he who made the Herb is also illegal too. Do you think Herb in the wrong hands can be detrimental? Yes. Well, how can you prevent against uh, someone who is not aware, someone who is not intelligent, well, getting their hands on it? You see, that is a very dangerous game to play. For example, Herb is always in the wrong hands, see, 90% of the time, see, because who Herb was designed for, the law make it illegal. See, but it's those who make the law control the Herb. So they know what to do, when to do, where to distribute. Because Herb don't care what they say. It's money. It's live cash. It's mm -hmm. dollars. And they know that. Who is going to throw away the dollar? See? But Herb being in the wrong hand spiritually can be detrimental because if one who consumes garbage daily then try to consume Herb for getting high or getting kicks, that could be detrimental because Herb is pure. Why do you consume Herb? Herb? I consume Herb for medicinal reasons, spiritual reasons. And, uh, Do you feel closer to God? No, not to God. I feel closer to Jah. Jah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's what I meant to say. Yes. Um, her, 
herb is antifungus, antivirus, antitrichnosis, and it's an antidote.